We don't actually know what happened there. It's so annoying when that happens. It literally... It That's happened even, before. It doesn't even cut out slightly. It, it just, just goes bash. Dead. It just goes bang. So, guys... It just goes bye-bye. So, guys, so, we do apologise about hello, that. Hello, hello. It just literally everyone. crashed out. We don't know what happened. So, do you want to just go yeah. back from the top? So, welcome, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. So, we were just saying that we have just watched the first episode of the new ITV series called Des about Dennis Nielsen, the famous, infamous serial, uh, serial killer. killer in the 80s, early 80s. Yeah, and Ursula and Baptiste, one of the followers on the last, one of the people watching on the last live that just died, cut out. was commenting on the first grievance we had with the show was mm. the wigs. The wigs, oh. they were clearly going for authenticity for the 70s and 80s, and that's good. Uh, I don't remember some of the vehicles they had. I don't remember black police vans in 1983, I'll have to confess. Um, but they went too hard on the wigs, like the dino rod guy. It looked like it, it was a Playmobil there. Yeah, the, the wigs definitely interfered But with... can I just ask you as an actress, and, you know, do, is there not a moment where, we, we, in, all, in all manners and genres of television making, you do s screen tests, you'll do test shots, you'll do makeup tests, you'll do all these kind of things. Will no one have seen that the wigs look diabolical? Well, it was only that wig, really. No, not really. All of the, all of the policemen, De other than Daniel Mays. All of the other policemen. I thought it was just Dinah Rodman. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, the show... We, right, right. So, he was a serial killer, murdered 15 people. Um, yep. And this started... This episode started right at the end with him being caught. We were well, a bit like... Yeah, what did oh, you think of that? Well, how's this going to go? Why did you think about that? Well, we were all a bit thrown. We watched it with the girls. But actually, it's quite nice. It's someone unra <laughs> yeah. unravelling it backwards. It was family viewing. It was family viewing. Yeah. I liked that because it immediately gave me the, it gave me the nod and the wink that this was going to become a character piece rather exactly. than Exactly. And, and that we were going procedural. to see David Tennant all the way through, yeah. which yeah. is what we came to it for. We don't want to get David Tennant caught in the last episode. We need him in every the frame. The frustration with David Tennant is he's so good so that when he's off camera, you struggle miss sometimes. Him. You do miss him. But I, can I just say, Daniel Mays, who I'm a big fan of, very fond, feel very fondly about him for some reason, uh, I thought he was very... How's that part where you're having to look a lot and in, be introverted and can process the terrible things that you're hearing? It can be a bit eggy. It was strange because some of it I thought was a bit leaden in, and slow. In the, but then I thought, no, actually, it just had a real 80s feel. Mm. We move, everything moves so much faster now. But actually, in the old days, in those days, the policeman would have got a piece of paper out, licked his pencil, sat down, taken down notes, and it just, and just that, that interfered a bit with me at the beginning because I thought, is this just really sort of, has this just been edited in a very sort of clunky way or are we just getting the essence of the period? Can I, before we get into the nitty gritty of, of Dennis Nielsen, the crimes, the serial killer and David Tennant's remarkable portrayal of him, did it make you want a cigarette? You just completely ignored what I just said. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm hearing what you said about but the what whole... did you? Can we just finish what I was talking okay, about? Which is, did you find that, that at the beginning? Did it sort of, were you thinking, is this just so slow? Because the, no. the, Because when you were with David Tennant, because he's so good and you're so drawn in by this utter yeah. evil, cool evil, but when the actual nuts and bolts of all the policemen stuff just seemed to be so slow. No, I quite liked it. Or was it I, whether that was just period? I think I bought into quite quickly that this wasn't going to be a procedural. I thought we're, we're, being, we're being bedded into something different here. I mean, I, so I didn't find that. I didn't find that sort of potentially boring or potentially mm, late. It's a bit weird. But I have to tell you something. It I, made me so glad I'd given up smoking. Oh, I could just smell everyone's suits and But the way they were all smoking, I mean, you forget that we used oh, to no, smoke indoors. Oh, no, it didn't indoors. make me want a cigarette at all. It, actually, it's more when I see somebody smoking and drinking that mm. I want to have a cigarette. But just that, what I call functional smoking, mm. which is just, just feeding the habit yeah, over yeah, yeah. and over again. Almost like... But I mean, it was weird, because at the beginning we thought, where is this going to go? We're at the end, at the beginning. We know there's 15 murders. We know he's cut them up. We know he's put them in mm. pipes. We know all of this. What else are we going to find out? But obviously, we're going to find out a lot more. Well, and this is great. And that's what I love. What I'm so excited about is because it's my favourite thing in the whole world. Kay said to me the other day, Nadia, not everything is down to someone's childhood. Because whenever we're talking about anyone, I go, oh, I wonder what their childhood was like. So I love to track back 
what made this person into who they are. And I thought, the setting, I I thought the setting up of Jason Watkins' yes! character, I thought was, was really fam- neat. Is he and a famous writer? He, I don't, yeah, I don't oh. know. I don't know. But I thought the fact that he was obviously of a different class, that he was gay, that this was all quite matter of fact, that he was intrigued, that he was obviously drawn to this guy, and then obviously that he's been written to. So, of course, what we're seeing here is the portrait of a sociopath, aren't we? I know, I'm so excited. You know, right down to the fact that he fires his own lawyer which is just brilliant. Because he's holding up yeah. his moment. This is his moment. He wants to know if he's in the papers. He wants to know. And this irritating lawyer keeps interrupting him because this is what he's been waiting for, the big Shh. reveal. Listen to this, Sean Evans, 96. My dad was his neighbour and came mm. home from work to police everywhere. Years later, read the book Killing for Company, which I presume is the book, on holiday and couldn't sleep. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Killing for Company. That tells you everything you want to know. something? Killing for company, though. Think about that. Because there's that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful line that David Tennant delivered, where when they say to him something along the lines, as you would in a state of shock, but why? And he said, I was kind of hoping you'd tell me that. That was the end of part two. I thought it was brilliantly delivered. I thought his his cold civility Mm. was astonishing. As Nicky Thompson says, matter of fact, casual. Yes, casual. Oh, I don't know. Let me think, let me think. I I, I, oh, Stephen. Yeah, Stephen. yeah. Could have been. It was, a Scottish, it was a Scottish name. Scottish name. Because of course, I think he'll remember every one of their names. Yeah. It's a bit like. Well, did you feel he was? You know, awkward? Silence of the Lambs. You know how he doesn't want to reveal yeah. because he wants the conversation. He wants the ongoing conversation. Mm. He wants the attention. But do you think that? Do you think he's purposefully not yes. remembering their names? Yes, absolutely. Well, you he wouldn't knows. necessarily get everyone's no, full names no, no, on no, a one-night no, no. stand. He, he knows. This is about the glory of it all. Mm. Oh. I won't be at all surprised if they find a notebook with them all written down. What do you think? What about when the guy comes in and says, he was a good little actor because he had a terrible wig. The man that had to come in and had his legs, his ankles tied together, he had a bad wig. Well, he had a, he had a mullet. He had a proper kind of 70s... He had a bad wig. They but were... he, I thought he... Because usually in these sorts of dramas, that sort of little, a part. small part like that is never done well. But he no. was really good. I really believed him. Actor, if you're watching this... You did a good job. I also really like the fact that it's not conventional procedural. Someone just said just a minute ago, look at how difficult it was for the police when they didn't have technology at their fingertips. So when they knew there was a Stephen, he had to come out of the office and say to the rest of the mm. office, find every Stephen from Scotland that's gone yeah. missing. And but, that's but, but, when, but when the guy from. said that's going to be a lot of people, I thought, is it? I mean, how many Stephens go... I don't think it would be a lot of people. I, I mean, I wonder There'd be how a lot many of people, people that have missing. gone missing, but there wouldn't have been a lot of Stephens. Yeah. I wonder what this is like for the families. Well, I always worry about that because is this part, this is a bit like that one with Martin Freeman, do you mm. remember? And there is there are real families involved in this. And so mm. there's always that discomfort watching yeah. any drama. Yeah. That, you know, are we potentially titillating? Do you remember when we watched the Bundy one? Yeah, the I Bundy. wasn't comfortable with that. No, not comfortable with it. And and again, it goes back to this thing a little bit like you had that woman on your on Loose Women who was talking about the serial abuse of the young girls. It always happens to invisible people, doesn't yeah. it? You know, the people that can't this be chronicled, I mean, this is can't the be 80s. charted. We had, I had cousins of that age, you know. Yeah. And I can imagine that, well, not imagine, absolutely every one of those people, like that poor woman when she says, can I see his body? Oh, don't. She's probably still alive, his yeah. mum. Yeah. You know, and I wonder if, they're, if people will be inextricably drawn to find out more, to look, to watch this, or absolutely horrified at the thought of it being dramatised, I don't know. Well, and also giving Dennis Nielsen the table, in a sense, mm. to talk about his life mm. in the way that we're going to. I mean, I have to say, I thought that last scene was watching two of, I think, personally, our greatest actors. I think Jason Watkins is one of our greatest actors. Mm. I think David Tennant is. And seeing them both sparring, if we're going to get a lot of that, Coupled with mm. an unpacking of where he came from, I mm. will give you the burden I mean, parking, of my life. Yeah, parking to one side, because I think it's mm. really always important to think of the victims and of the families and friends of these victims. And I mm. mean, parking that to one side, because obviously this has been made. Yes, I am going to be absolutely fascinated to see the unravelling of mm. his mind and to understand what made him do this. Because obviously, surely the more understanding that we have of... Because I, I bet you anything we're going to find out he had a horrific But can I just childhood. ask you a question? You yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Well, maybe not. Maybe he weren't at all. He was well, no, just I born, think, born think, a sociopath. I think the, the finer detail is going to be horrific about killing for company. I think that tells us mm. everything we need to know. But can I just ask you a question? Because this is something you talk about a lot. 
understanding the backstory, as you just quoted about your friend Kay saying, you know, not everyone, does it, does it not, ex I'm not saying it excuses their behaviour, but why is it important to you to know the backstory? Does, is it about being able to make sense of the un, unimaginable? I think, and so in a sense you find some sort of safety and certainty in that. I just think that. for all the things that, that humans have invented, right. whatever it is, the car, yeah. aeroplane, computers, AI, nothing is, t is as extraordinary as the human mind and body. Mm. That's why those two things fascinate me. But you me. feel sorry for everyone, what I'm driving no, at no, here is... No, and, and so I'm fascinated mm. in this incredible piece of equipment, which is the mind, yeah. and how cracks... How the cracks can come into one person and it can shift them into one place. And the cracks could... You could have siblings that all had horrendous yeah, childhoods yeah, and they would all go off in different ways. It will manifest itself in different ways. And I just... They, to me, there's nothing as interesting as but is that. But like is it not like the lover of Jason Watkins said? Is it not just because they're evil? Do you believe in evil? But what is evil? Yeah, but what I is don't evil? know if I believe in evil. Do you believe in evil? No, I believe in different brains. Different because minds. I think trying to understand... What is evil? I think trying what to is understand, evil? Like in the devil comes up? No, I think that no, there's... I think evil, evil is a religiously uh, weighted term that is based upon a certain moral standards that we live by. All of, yes. our, all of our morality, right down to the value of life, comes from a religious perspective in terms of, you know, the, 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 the sort of the value and the richness yeah. of, of life. Um, so all of our moral standards sort of stem from there. So evil... <laughs> It's Maddie. Uh, evil is always where there's a kind of a rub against that. So you could say that anyone who murders anyone has committed an evil act. It's an evil act, but I don't know if they are evil. Right. I mean, take for... OK, we have this discussion a lot. I'm fascinated by this. So, And there are sociopaths that haven't had terrible childhoods, that are just born with a yeah. broken brain, I think. Um, but if you take the child, because they say a sociopath, you can be born a psychopath, but a sociopath has gone through usually something absolutely terrible neglect. Yeah. Terrible, terrible neglect. So if you take, if you hear the baby's story, they haven't been fed, they haven't been loved, they've been kicked across the room, they've had any a, mm. a sexual abuse, whatever it is, at what point in their life do they stop being a child that had no choice in their beginning mm. and that were brutalised? And, and when so is potentially the, have sympathy. Yeah, so when does the sympathy stop yeah. and they're just an evil person? Because yeah. is it when they're 10? Well, I think cases, Is it when they're 16? Is it when they're 18? Well, I think, cases, I think that's why cases like the Jamie Bolger case cause such a problem yeah. because you're left wondering why does one child... I mean, Maddie's line, and, and it's one I often agree with, is, yes, but everyone's had the same poor start in life. Not everyone does something as awful as this person's done. Yeah. So no amount of understanding why they've got to where they've got to really explains it, because there's always no, someone not, who's been through worse. it's not worse. to explain it, or to let people off, or to say that they shouldn't have, you know, mm. pay for their crimes, but it just fascinates right. me. Right, yeah. And I think that's what... Like, we're... we were talking today, what would we do if we weren't, didn't do what we do? I would be a therapist or a nutritionist, because yeah. those two things... I mean, look at this. This is totally amazing. And I said I'd be look, an actor. we can just do that. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, that is quite something. My mind is telling me to do that. But I, I, but I also like the imagination as well. Do you know they can't recreate that in a robot at no, all, what we do with a hand, because it's so genius. No, it's quite something. Uh, can I just say a final thought about the show? I thought that I liked the way they folded into Dennis Nielsen, David Tennant's uh, delivery in that final scene, or in the cell his description of society's obsession with the macabre. Mm. I like the fact that he's named it, because in yeah. a sense, us all watching it is doing that very yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. So and I clever. like the fact that it's wrong-footing us into thinking, right, this is about a serial killer, but we're going to have clearly quite an intense psychological study. Oh, my God, Faith Goodman's given us some good homework. Follow Professor David Wilson. He's an amazing criminologist. Oh, wow. And you, Dennis Nielsen. Oh, yes, please. Oh, okay. there you go, everybody. Who yeah. wants to try that? Faith Goodman says, follow Professor mm. David Wilson. Maybe we can all have a bit of a look at him for the next review of the next episode Absolutely. and see what we think. Absolutely. Well, there you go. I have to say, I thought it was top draw. Well done, ITV. Top draw, top David draw. Tennant, we Jason loved Walken, it. Did, everyone, Daniel Mays. did everybody else like it, by the way? Yeah, everyone's single-handedly saying they all loved it. Ah. Yeah. Can you give us some thumbs up, please, if you enjoyed this review and if you're going to watch the next episode and join our next review? Hit the thumbs up. 
just here. Rachel Keller, I like the fact the story is pretty accurate and not leading off to a different story for the fact of a TV show as a criminology student. Usually it bugs me. A I criminology agree. student, I agree. Rachel Keller. Oh my God, what's that? Oh my God, I think I would have loved to have been a criminologist. Mm, so would. what does a criminal, what will be your job? Yeah. Do you work Le in can I, sorry, can I just say, Lisa Millwood said, he said, the author, that Nielsen fancied him. Imagine knowing that. And I thought the way they played that was very good because he'd said just before, I won't I like shake his hand. I like the way no, he shrank. I like the way he shrank a bit. he said he wouldn't shake his hand did and he, he did. Yeah, and didn't you? No, he said, I shouldn't think so. No, no, But did you did. like at the end when he shrunk back as he realised yes. that he'd made a deal with, with the, the devil. devil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because maybe he never did recover from hearing yeah. all about his past. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I think they've. I think it was perfectly pitched. I agree. A couple of people saying that. I hope he contact. They con the filmmakers contacted the victims' families. Um, I, I think they I'd probably have would. They'd have I to. think there's a lot that's that, that, There's a lot of TV is much more careful mm. about these things these days. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so I think they probably would have done. Um, but I think we're David in, Tennant was fantastic, wasn't he? Wasn't was. he so it's on each night this week, guys. It's on tonight, tomorrow night, and Thursday night. Oh, was no, it? No, Wednesday night. Oh, Emma Stapley was on this morning today. The video ah. is on YouTube. Ah. Who, oh, David Tennant. David Tennant. Oh, yeah, he would have been, wouldn't he? He was on the radio as well today. He's very, very good. If you haven't seen him in staged, please check it out on BBC iPlayer. Him and uh, Michael Sheen, is it? They're so good. They're so good. Oh, David Wilson was on this morning. Ah, oh. oh, Professor David Wilson. Okay, that'll be really interesting. I'm going to have a look. Guys, don't forget, check out um, uh, 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 um, Dr. John Campbell's film that you put up yesterday on the good news on COVID if you want a bit of good news yeah. before you go to sleep. We loved stage two, Leslie. Yeah. I hope they do another one. So do I. And so if you've enjoyed this, please enjoyed hit this, the thumbs hit up, Hit the thumbs guys. up, share it with your friends, put your comments down there. I love reading your comments after we've done live reviews, especially when we're about to review the next episode the next night because you usually tell us stuff that I can then pretend I already yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So please leave your comments. Right. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because we don't just do TV reviews here. Our regular subs will tell you we, we do, do loads of things on Cookery, here. Cookery, gardening. And we love the more the merrier. Yeah. All right, my lovelies. All right, guys. Lots See you tomorrow for Coffee Morning. Bye. Bye.